I realized for the very first time that I was actually on the way to killing myself. And I suddenly understood what I was doing to myself. I also understood that I couldn't stop myself. Welcome back. That was an excerpt from Jackie's new book, The Weight of Beautiful. Um, you are so raw in this book. And you, I mean, I thought you were raw on the housewives. <laughs> you are extremely raw on this. You talk about this low point. You were in Mexico at a restaurant Instead of being at the table enjoying the meal, you were in a bathroom stall eating tuna. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand, like, and I do understand that fear, mm -hmm. but this fear of food. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I lost the all ability to eat without fear. Oh. And so I reached a point where I could only eat things that I knew for sure what the nutritional content of them were. And it was my first time taking a trip somewhere where they wouldn't change the menu for me. So you me. would go to a restaurant and you'd say, can you take off this, can you add, like you would... Worse than that. Oh, I tell would me. call the restaurant in advance. I always had to know where I was going. I would call them in advance and make sure that they would do any kind of changes that I needed. And um, when I got there, I knew exactly what I was going to order already. There were no surprises right. for me. And um, in Mexico, they wouldn't change anything. And I didn't know what to do, so I packed um, 36 cans of tuna with me, and I ate them in the bathroom in the middle of meals, and I just didn't eat my meals in the restaurant. What did Evan think you were... Did he know? No. I don't think so. I don't think he knew. I think he knew more than I think but I don't know that he knew at that time that I was eating in the bathroom. You talk about also the wedding dress and you wrote about it, um, this picture. Mm. Um, you look happy, you have a smile, but you wrote that having just a bite of your wedding cake caused you great distress. Mm -hmm. You wrote, I should have been thinking about anything else that exact moment in the middle of the dance floor in my delicate lace dress that hugged my chest, showing off every rib around my breastbone and the razor sharp clavicles jutting out beneath my shoulders. But here I was with my new husband, ready to feed me the first bite of something I wouldn't eat again for almost 15 years. Cake. Mm -hmm. No cake on my birthdays, no cake on my kids' birthdays, nothing. No food. I had no food for 18 years. I'm in tears because you know, listen, we all have struggles and no one's life is perfect. I came out here live with 5,000 things on my mind in my life. Yeah. To share these things, what is that like? Were you worried about triggering these fears again? No, I was mm. so over it and I said, I, I just need to take all of these terrible things that I did to myself and give them a second life as something amazing. Oh. Yeah. But I will also say that, you know, the book is eating disorder focused, yeah. but it is not just a book for people who had eating disorders. I mean, it's really a book about being lost wow. and getting yourself into something so toxic and yeah. feeling really trapped. And then one day deciding that you need to find your way out. Yeah. It really is. Absolutely, absolutely. You told, um, our producer that um, was it, a week before you finally got professional help, you saw a, a very thin yeah. elderly woman. Yes. I think it was at the grocery store. At the supermarket grocery supermarket. store, yep. Why did she, she change her perspective? She was looking for a really long time at the nutritional content on the back of a package in the freezer. And I used to do that all the time. And like, I, I know the signs, you know, and I know when somebody is studying nutritional content for too long. And I said, and she was much older, and I said to myself, God, that's gonna be me. Oh. It's gonna be me, it's never gonna end. Mm. And I was a little bit sad, but I also, I accepted it because I felt like that's what I needed to keep doing if I wanted to live in this body. And um, I couldn't stop thinking about that. Yeah. I didn't put it in the book, but Why I kept not? thinking. Why did you keep it out of the book? Um, it's not that I kept it out. It was just I didn't think it was significant enough, but now I'm realizing We're that reflecting. it really it really did live in my head. Wow. It did. And so now you are at what one year mark of recovery? Right now? Yeah, yeah. 
I started my recovery two years ago, two years but ago. I consider myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a real turning point. At, at some point, I realized that I had learned how to eat, but that I still hated the way I looked. So after about a year in recovery, yeah. I had put on a significant amount of weight for me, yeah. and I hated the way I looked. And so I felt like something wasn't connecting with my recovery. I didn't feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And then I started to realize that until I loved myself, for me and yeah. stopped worrying what other people think of my body, then I started recovering. You started that recovering. was the difference with everything. Now, if I feel beautiful and I feel beautiful, yes. it doesn't matter, I don't weigh myself, so I can't hate a number yeah. that I don't know. <laughs> I can't hate a number I don't know. I yeah. don't know if I've gained weight, lost weight. I, I try to eat foods that I love and I really love the way I look, not because of weight, in spite of weight, I don't care about weight. Oh, love it. Well, coming up, you love yourself. I know who you also love, your husband, Evan. He's going to join us. And what some people saw is breaking news. You got support from Teresa <laughs> Judice at your book signing last week. That's a twist of fate. More about that after the break. with New Jersey Housewife Jackie Goldschneider and her husband, Evan, has entered the building. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Jackie's talking about her beautifully written memoir, The Weight of Beautiful. And I teased before the show, you've been on The Housewife many years now. Mm -hmm. We've seen every side of personalities of everybody on there. A lot of people were surprised last week, Teresa Judice showed up at a book signing to support you. What did that feel like? Yeah, it Cause she pulls no punches, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I had to learn to let go of a lot of trauma from yes. the past and like um, things that I was holding on to that made me sad from childhood and learning to let go of all of that stuff. Yeah. I also learned to let go of things from recent years yeah. and once I did that, I was able to really embrace new friendships that yeah. I haven't been able to in the past. All right, so you've also learned to, you talk about changing things in the past. You write about with your children, you have two sets of twins. Mm -hmm. um, you were exhibiting things that you didn't like in the way you were feeding them. Yes. Um, monitoring food intake, some of the trauma that you'd experienced because trauma gets passed along, we know mm -hmm. that. You're now in a better place with how you talk with them about food. Yes. What is your approach now? Um, I really try to, first and foremost, model very good behaviors in front of them. Um, I always eat with them. Yeah. I never just go and get water. Um, I share things with them. I make sure that they see me not over-exercising. Yeah. Um, I still get a little tricked up sometimes talking to them because I don't know the right words. Um, I don't know if it's dangerous to tell them to opt for something healthy. You know, mm. I, I get nervous sometimes because I'm so scared of passing more mm. on to them, but I always make sure that um, they see me eating real food yeah. and indulging. And You're watching, you know, they, they see us and yes. they mimic what we do. And yeah. Evan, I, I met you all, we were on the red carpet of GLAAD and media, yep. and, there, and you came up to me and you said, I want to come on the show, I have this book, <laughs> and I'm telling everything. And people say that to me all the time, because the team knows I, I'm always hesitant with memoirs, because I've had people come on, and then they say, well, I didn't say that, and I'm like, right. it's on page 22. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? What in the money grab? I mean, yeah. but, and so when I read it, I knew that this was real. Mm -hmm. I knew that she was really laying her soul bare. What? What does that feel like from someone who supported her for so many years? You're, you're her husband. I'm just happy that she's getting better because you know she's lived with it for so long. It's it's a mental illness that you can't really diminish. It sounds easy, you know. In the beginning, you think, you know, why don't you just eat something? Yeah. I mean, that's that's like a natural inclination to say that, but it's it's really much more deep rooted than that. So when it's she not wrote e that story about the cake, you know, because yeah. I thought about you. I mean, there you are, yeah. and we can both be in the same room and have such different experiences and memories. Yeah. You're thinking, I'm sure, oh my gosh, the woman of my dreams, and she is like, I, I, I can't eat this cake. I mean, two people, yeah, same photo, different there, experience. There's two things, yeah. I mean, I saw my friends in the back, so I knew I was about to take about 10 shots of tequila. But, <laughs> uh, on the other end, there are many times over the last, let's call it two decades or so, where you could tell that she wasn't fully present. 
Mm. And you could tell because she's thinking about something and you don't know at first, you know, when you're in a relationship with somebody, you're like, well, why aren't they fully present? You kind of think, oh, maybe they don't like me, maybe, maybe, they're, maybe there's something work-related on their mind, but, you know, knowing now that it was really all food and it was, it was like an illness. Like the tuna scene. I mean, you're there on a vacation in Mexico. This is a yeah. dream. And she's hiding in the bathroom. Yeah, she's hiding in the bathroom. I mean, it, you see some of it. So yeah. I remember looking over and seeing the suitcase and you see the suitcase filled with like these really small tuna fish cans. Yeah. And you're like, all right, you know, maybe, maybe she's augmenting what yes. she's eating. Yeah. You're, yeah. Kind, of, you're, you're kind of hoping. And you try to be as supportive as possible as a partner. Um, and you try to, I guess, very subtly say, you know, maybe you could change this. Maybe, right. maybe let's cook together. Let's go out and, and eat something. Let's try this, this new restaurant. And, you know, you keep yeah. trying until hopefully something goes, but you also don't want to push too hard. Yeah. So that, that was kind it's of a always the balance. balance. I mean, when it's you a see, delicate balance. It's yeah. a delicate balance. I know, Jackie, in the acknowledgments of the book, you thank 15-year-old Jackie. If you could tell 15-year-old Jackie something today. Oh, man. Starving yourself is never going to fix anything. Um, you know, I would say that there's this whole big grace space you know, because I didn't know anything but um, eating everything in sight and being sad or starving yourself and feeling like you liked your body. I didn't know that there was any gray space in the middle and I would just tell myself that there's this whole big world in the middle where you can be happy and eat and, and love, your, love yourself. Love yourself, you know? love yourself, beautiful. Evan, thank you so much. I'm thank happy we so ran much, into Evan. each other. Yes. Jackie's book, The Weight of Beautiful, is out now. And Tam Fam, everybody is going home with a copy on this powerful story. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, boy. You're gone. Thank you.